Values above 1,000 represent unstable regions. So you'll see here, move the map down, Ocala, which was getting the bad weather early, to the north of us, you saw all the black clouds up to the north. If you correlate that to the key on the right, it was showing 1,500. Uh, 1200 to up to up to or yeah 1200 to 1800 so that's a very convective air mass and when when we see that in Florida we're concerned about overdevelopment and potential rain um, and I think it's true in Texas too that that high you they may not be everywhere like they are here where a front's coming through but it's telling you that there's going to be somewhere in the area that's going to blow up and and rain so you need to be cautious um, obviously each place is a little different Villa Grove is a classic example if they're showing 1200 <laughs> you're going to have some big blow up really close by it's probably going to migrate down the range or up the range so you got to be very careful um, and here's cloud base Let's see, I'll go back to tomorrow or yesterday, which was the day, good day. There's GFS was saying six thousand, five to six thousand feet. Yeah, it was probably pretty close to that. And I said I could click on this, and it would show me what all the models were saying. I'll click on a gray area to the left there, saying GFS was saying 5,300. NAM three was saying 4,300. The other models were saying it was going to be too dry for clouds, and that's what I was seeing yesterday morning. And then went to the skew T to say, yeah, we're going to get clouds, even though the models don't think so. And that was 2 o'clock, and that was probably, NAM 3 was probably about right, 4,300 feet. Sorry, uh, what's the difference between the NAM 3 and the NAM 12? Pardon? The difference between uh, the let's see if they'll... Like uh, NAM 3... I mean, what the difference is in the model. Yeah, I don't know. I believe it's three hour intervals and 12 hour intervals. That's yeah. why it just looked. Yeah. Sure. So wrap 13 is 13 hour intervals? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Bit, yeah, I was going to say wrap is supposed to be the rapid update model, right? Like the R R R U C. Right. Former RUC. Former RUC. Yes. <laughs> So the last thing I'll show you is that there are a couple other key things. Uh, cloud cover. So yesterday at 2 o'clock, it's showing 10% uh, cloud cover in, our, in, the, in the general area. I think we were seeing uh, uh, quite a bit more than that. It was probably more like 30%. 30%. But, uh, and then precipitation for yesterday showing nothing. Note the barbs on the map that are showing the wind speed. I still have it at top of the lift and at 2 o'clock at 4,300 feet, 14 miles per hour out of the northwest. I think we were seeing more west-northwest and some even uh, west to west-southwest uh, depending on where you were at. But certainly at the top of the lift on our final glide we had uh, a 14 mile an hour tailwind where I was at. Um, whoops. So this is a paid for service and you know the cost of five toes or four toes you got this for a year and for me it's invaluable. It's uh, very very useful for um, in my case I look at it as how much do I value my time and I'm sure we're all in the same boat you know do you want to go to the site and sit there and not soar all day when you could have been doing honeydews or something? No. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I mean, every day. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Larry, Larry, how much time do you spend looking at XE's skies compared with your key yeah, key it you know, takes me about it takes me about a half hour to look at both. And it depends on the distractions around me, but and which one do you spend more time on? Um, SKU T is quick. I can right. get through that pretty quickly. Right. Yeah.
and then I spend more time here because a lot more parameters to look at. Um, yeah. And you're still using the judgment right between them. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, there are days that I've elected not to fly, uh, not to drive the, take the time to drive to the site, and it's gotten good. You know, I mean, that happens. But there are very few days where I've gone to the site where I've gotten skunked in the last 10 years, and very few. So, um, and um, I mean, I'm, my air time is up high. I get about 200 hours a year. So, um, I'm retired, so I don't work for, I don't work anymore. But um, most of the air time comes here in Florida. So, February was a good month. They had two weeks of record high temps and we, we got almost 30 hours in in February. And then this month has been pretty crappy. Uh, we didn't go flying for 12 days, I think, or thir 13th was the first day we flew in, in March. So, and usually we get that, there, what, what's happening is there's a, a blocking high pressure system up in the Northeast that's, that's pr bringing all these storms through, through the Northeast. And they've been migrating all the way into Florida, which is uncommon in February. We we expect to see that in March. I mean, in Fe in March, we expect to see that in February or January. But to have 39 degrees on March 15th in in Florida is very uncommon. Had to be a record low or close to it. So um, we're waiting for uh, that southerly flow to start again down. You know, here. And we haven't gone, we've only ventured north twice um, this year. We went up to Williston twice, and, and uh, that's the only southerly flow we've had. You did a bunch of times last year. Yeah, oh man, last year we did a bunch, and the year before we did it a bunch. And the year before we had like 15 flights up into Georgia. You know, uh, 15 pilots fly up into Georgia, from, <coughs> which is over 100 miles and uh, the longest was 180 so yeah it was really good not sure we're going to get it this week though people so if you look at the weather i mean we got a front coming through again it's going to blow hard tomorrow 20 to 30 and then we're hoping that it'll settle down the next day enough for us to do another task to the south and uh certainly by wednesday or Thursday, uh, it'll settle down enough for us to get three good days in. But, uh, you know, m one of the aspects as a meet director that Belinda and Davis have to go through is to make sure that the conditions are safe for 72 people. So we have a wide spectrum of experience level in the people that are flying here. And so that's a, it's a tough call to make uh, it's a significant responsibility to have on your shoulders to, to ensure that this is going to be a safe competition. So, um, you know, I, I respect it. I went through that at the Midwest last year. We had two days that we canceled that I'd have been flying in, <laughs> but, and they were really good days. But, you know, it was blowing hard and gusty and uh, we just couldn't do it. So, be fair for yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Have absolutely, it has to be safe, it has to be fair. So, um, and you know, when it is marginal like that, if you do choose to fly, it takes a lot longer because people are unsettled. You, they want to make sure they get off in the right conditions. So, um, that wasn't an impact on our decision at all. It was more uh, safety, but, but. Um, other questions? Well, thanks for letting me share you, with you what I know. If you do want me to send this presentation to you, my, my e send me an email. My email address is lbunner, B-U-N-N-E-R, at AOL.com. And you know, I didn't put a lot of information in that slide presentation about accessing uh, the website to the interactive part, but if you send me a little tickler that says, hey, uh, show me where to get to the link so I can play with it myself, 
um, then I can add that to the presentation so that you can get access as well. Sweet. Thanks, Larry. Sweet. Thank you. I hope that's helpful. And hey, oh, the other thing is, fire questions online to me too. I, I'm 